Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Grissom for Innovation and Tech Today, and we're chatting with Chris O'Dowd and Gabrielle Dennis, who star as Dusty and Cass, Cass Hubbard in Apple TV's new series, The Big Door Prize, based on the novel by M.L. Walsh. Dusty, uh, Dusty and Cass are husband and wife whose bucolic small-town lives are thrown into turmoil by the arrival of the mysterious Morpho machine at the local general store. Thank you both for doing this. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us, Jim. Jim. Jinx. <laughs> so what's more fun, promos or, or shooting the series? It's all a blast. Um, uh, as long as I don't have to do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was teasing. I said a lot of times when we're together doing the interviews, I get to always just turn my head to him and hopefully he has an answer. Um, but filming has, is, is amazing. But the best part, to be honest, is watching the finished product. Watching the world outside of the world we create on set. It's like we know our scenes, we know our world, our characters, but to go and see all the elements together of all the other storylines, all the other characters' work, the editing, the sound, the the music, all of the elements together, it's such such an experience, especially because, you know, when you're starting a show off, you have no blueprint. Um, and to see David's vision come to life in its full entirety, is that's for me the best experience of the whole thing. Well, this is certainly an unusual TV series, uh, to say the least. Uh, it's marketed as a comedy, but it's uh, much more than your typical 30-minute comedy sitcom. Do you feel like you're um, acting in a, um, a tragic comedy in a way? I think in a lot of ways it does go through the genres fairly quick. And I suppose human experience can be like that. It feels like a lot of TV shows at the moment are mimicking that, from White Lotus to Succession. There's so much comedy and very high-end drama that people almost expect it. Now, there are moments in this show which feel like pure sci-fi and, and beautifully done. And we shot it very much like a sci-fi. Adam Silver and Bella Gonzalez did an incredible job of creating this Americana world with iconography of this morpho machine that is going to make us metamorphize into different kinds of people, I suppose, or different personalities and behaviors. Can't remember what the question was, but uh, I do think, <laughs> I, I do think that creating that world of different genres allows a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Do you feel like you're first and foremost trying to get laughs or to uh, impart a, a message to the audience? I think a first and foremost is just uh, staying grounded in the truth of the moment and the truth of what the experience is. And just like life, there's times we laugh. I mean, people laugh at funerals, you know? There's times we cry and laugh in, within the same day or the same hour or the same five minutes of each other. Um, so I think if we just, as actors and performers, we just try to stay in the truth of what's on the page at that moment, what that emotional human interaction is um, that's going on. And I think for us, a lot of times filming, I didn't, I wasn't aware of like, is this a comedy? Is this a drama? Is this a fantasy? You're just in the moment. And that's why when I finally see it all together, I'm like, oh, this is what this show is, right? Because you don't really have any uh, blueprint of it to begin with. So to see the full entirety of it together is awesome. I love the show. Gabrielle, what life experiences did you bring to this role? How did you find yourself in this character? Oh, so many. I mean, like one of the 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 through lines of like uh, Dusty and Cass asking each other about their level of happiness in this, in their relationship and where they are currently in life. Um, that is a question that I was forced to ask myself as well in pre preparing for this character. And like emotionally, it's just kind of like, I was saying earlier today, like when someone asks you, you know, like if you're going emotionally through something and someone sees you that knows you and it's like, are you okay? You were fine until they asked you, are you okay? Now you can't hold back the flood of tears and the emotions because there's something contained in there. There's something that's bottled inside that you haven't been able to untap. So I feel like once you start asking heavy questions, like, are you happy? Are you living your life's potential? You start asking questions and you really start to take uh, an inventory of where you are in life and how you can um, possibly make it better. Chris, did the uh, script cause you to have any self-reflection on your own life? Do you feel like that you have uh, headed down the, the right path and that you're fulfilling your potential? I think it does. I think I, I read it just after I had turned 40. And weird shit starts happening inside <laughs> your body, outside your body, on top of your body, within your relationships. And I think that Dusty's going through all of that too. So it's a bit of a midlife crisis of a show. And Dusty's relationship with the world is changing real quick. 
it definitely made me think, am I in the right place at the right time or is this just where I ended up? And uh, I don't know the answer to that yet. It is odd the uh, question, what, what constitutes success? Uh, you would think that, that Dusty would be uh, content in his life, and I guess he was until the arrival of the, the morpho machine. It's all the bloody machines, fault. This is the issue, Jim. It's all the bloody machines. Did you ever go to the county fairs, and they used to have the, uh, the, uh, the arcade-style fortune teller? Yeah, like the Zoltar. Where, like the... Zo yeah, Zoltar is what everybody remembers, but I remember the actual machines when they were, they were common at, uh, at county fairs and arcades. Was it the same kind of thing? It would put, put out a card? Yeah. Yeah. It would it'd do his head, it's and like a lot of times it would have, have a crystal ball that yeah. it, would, uh, it would look into. Very creepy. So I think I've got time for one more question. Uh, my English son-in-law has uh, tasked me with asking Chris if he's a Tottenham fan. Absolutely not. <laughs> big, <laughs> big Liverpool fan. Oh, uh, see, that's not what that's not no. what you wanted to hear. No, you no, just, you, you just lost a viewer. <laughs> what? I'm what? a Tottenham fan. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, You're viewer. <laughs> Everyone else is a Tottenham fan. <laughs> Reds till I die. So how did y'all enjoy filming in Atlanta? It's a great town. I actually hadn't really spent much time here before, but it's it's got its own vibe. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I love That's that. That's where I'm from. I'm actually a retired Atlanta firefighter. Oh, nice. Ah, good man. Looks like some of those scenes y'all were filming were just north of Buckhead and Sandy Springs, the suburban scene. That's yeah. right. We're up in Loganville and Doraville. Okay. Doraville, that's where those split level houses are. I recognize them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful country, country up there. Georgia is such a pretty state. I have a sister down in Savannah. Now that's a really beautiful town. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Good food too. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for doing this. I uh, hope you uh, have a, a great rest of the weekend and I'm looking forward to the rest of this season and season two as well. Thank you. We hope so too. Cheers, Jim. Take care, Jim.